For me, fishing larger venues gives me a completely different buzz. And I think it probably all stems back to my childhood days and how I first got into fishing. And that was the air of mystery, not knowing what's beneath the surface. And that is very much the case on a big expanse of water. So here I am in Nottinghamshire, just outside Newark. I've got Harry with me, he's doing the filming. Only this time, this isn't a challenge. Fox have said, it's up to me to choose wherever I want to go. So I've chosen here, which is Girton Pit. As you can see, it is a pretty impressive expanse of water, 70 plus acres of pretty much raw, untouched, big, deep, windswept gravel pit. That also just so happens to contain a 50 pound common and this is a venue that I've wanted to fish now for quite some time um, so it's going to be quite nice not to have the shackles and constraints of the challenge to to enable me just to fish however I want to fish so Harry you can mind your own business on this occasion and the conditions are set to really warm up the sun's meant to come out it's meant to be temperatures in the high 20s so I think the only thing to do now is do a few laps, that might take some time, but I think there's a good chance we might be able to spot a carp or two. I think we all have our own idea about what actually constitutes being a big venue and I guess it's all relative to the, to the size of venues that you have been fishing previously. I remember the first time I walked onto a, um, a, a lake in Yorkshire that was about 30 acres having only previously fished farm ponds before that and that to me then just seems like an ocean and I didn't know where to start. I was completely intimidated by it and I felt so out of my depth. And um, it actually put me off a bit, to be honest. It was probably about 10 years before I, before I went back there. Uh, now, walking onto a, a big lake for the first time, I would actually treat them very much like I would any other venue. And obviously you need to find you need to find the carp on a big lake like this, which has a perimeter of 1.6 miles. It just means a lot more, more legwork than if it was a smaller venue. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to find, you have to find the fish. And, that, and that's, that's applicable on, on any venue, no matter how big it is. Locating them isn't always easy. Um, and the fish don't always necessarily show. But for me personally, I, I, can't, I can't even contemplate getting the rods out of the van until I'm 100% sure I'm in the right location. So 
on a typical session on a, on a large water, it may not be uncommon for me to have the rods out of the water, just walking around the lake for longer periods than I'm actually angling. Um, I'm quite happy to spend the day doing laps with a, a good pair of Polaroids, climbing trees, looking in all sorts of nooks and crannies, just trying to find the fish. That for me is, is way more important than spending time with the rods in the water in areas where there may not even be any fish. When I do eventually find a group of fish after what may be hours and hours of walking around, searching, kind of get that sort of feeling of excitement. Again, it goes back to like my, my days as a, as a kid when I was first started fishing. And I get that feeling of excitement whilst also doing my best to try and control it when really I just want to go, ah! <laughs> to go back to the rods, go back to the pad and get my rods. <laughs> it's just, it's just controlled excitement nowadays. Well, I'd almost completed a, a full lap of the 70 acre lake. And we've seen the odd fish here and there, but considering there's around 400 carp in here, I hadn't really seen any, any groups of fish at all, just ones and twos dotted around. And I've just come to the, the narrow ends of the lake, which I'm, I'm told is the shallowest. And I've just seen a group of around 10 fish in little more than a couple of feet of water. I think there's also a few fish which I, I can't really see. I think there's a few that every now and then sort of come in and out of these trees down to my left. Um, but there is two fish here which are noticeably larger than, than the rest of the group. Uh, both really nice, nice commons. Um, and because they're in such shallow water, I think it's an absolutely brilliant stalking opportunity. I mean, the, as they're coming in, the, 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 the heads are only inches off the bottom. And I think a nice little little margin trap here is gonna uh, be our best, best chance of, of getting one of these fish. So I'm gonna nip back to the van, get some kit, and have a go. Well, I've just dashed back to the van and got everything set up back there away from the water's edge. Um, there is fish still here. And at the moment, I'm not able to get a rig in. I don't want to risk spooking them, disturbing them and ruining my chances. Um, but the fish do seem to be drifting in and out. So I'm just waiting for that opportunity when the fish move out for me to, to lower the rig in place and set my little trap. The fish has just spooked itself there. So as how, how edgy they are. Um, but this is the rig that I'm going to be using. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's really simple. I've got a three and a quarter ounce inline lead, which is fished uh, drop-off style. There is this sort of snaggy tree to my left and there's quite a lot of weed in the swim. So I think ditching the lead on the, tra on the take will improve my chances of, of landing it um, should, should we hook one. Coming down from that, I've got a short uh, five inch hook link of 25 pound Camotex Semi Stiff. That goes down to a size four wide gape hook. And the hook bait I'm using here is just a, a single grain of maize which has been critically balanced with a, a piece of foam. Um, and then I've just got a very small uh, walnut size PVA bag of, of mixed pellets. Uh, and that's it at the moment. I'm just waiting for these fish to move out. I'm going to set the trap and I'm just going to put a, a few little sprinklings of, of hemp and maize in the area just to hopefully uh, see them tip down and have a bit of a, a, bit of a, a grub about. If anything, there's more coming. That's a big fish. Although the fish have moved out slightly, they just, they just sat on the, uh, on the edge of the weed near this, this clear spot close in. It, it, it's still quite... I still think it's a bit risky to try and uh, get a rig in place. That's what I'm doing, I'm just flicking in a, a few 
few grains of hemp at a time just to sort of semi-spook them, I guess. Um, but they'll soon come back. They're not, you know, they're not panicking, they're not bolting away. But it's just enough just to, just to move them on a little bit. Actually, that hasn't worked at all. There's two fish going right where I've just thrown it. <laughs> oh, one of them's a big one as well. Actually, he's just gone. I tell you what. I think, I think now's my chance. Yeah, the ball just, the ball just moved out a tiny bit. All right, now's my chance. I've just gone the other side of this weed bed. I'm not gonna cast it, I'm just gonna lower it, lower it in. Again, I don't wanna make a massive splash. There, in. Sink all the line. Stalking is without doubt one of my favourite methods. Being able to watch the carp at close quarters and observe their behaviour and their actions, watching them move around and seeing which areas they, they prefer to be in and, and looking at spots where you feel they are perhaps more likely to, to tip down and, and take a bait. Obviously you can see, you can see the fish and you sort of see a group of fish, you think, oh, I want that one. And, 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 then, and when you do actually, if it does actually all work out and pay off and you do actually get the fish that you've actually selected, it's, it's absolutely inc incredible. It's such a buzz. And even more so on a big lake like this, you think all that water it could be swimming around in. And I've just caught him yards or even feet from the bank. It's exhilarating. Mark! Mark! Ah. I'm gonna get it. What a nice mirror! I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Oh, you it up. Where the hell did that come from? Mate, no, I, I literally just saw a massive boil. Yeah. And looked down and the rock was bending round. Bloody hell. Well, I think both me and Harry had kind of given up hope for this spot. After that fish came in and picked up the hook bait and, and got away with it and spooked, the fish just haven't been coming in. And um, it's like an absolute oven in here. The sun's beaming down. I was being cooked from the inside out. And I just said to Harry, just watch the rod and have to nip back to the, to the van and get a drink. I just got back to the van <laughs> and Harry was screaming. And here we've got what looks a, a nice mirror. That was totally out of the blue. Oh, 
Those are nice fish. Yes, Harry. Well done. Well, look, this is where we're fishing. I can see, I can see my bait. I put out about five bits of maize. I can see one, two, three, four, five. There we go. I can see all five bits of maize. <laughs> so it's literally just taking that, um, that little tiny walnut sized PVA bag, taking it in one go, one mouthful. And there we go. Yes. Catching any carp for me, a large, low stocked water gives me a completely different sense of accomplishment. To me, the fish seem, they seem different. They seem more wild. And generally, they're a lot more hard earned. You've put in the leg hours, you've put in all the hard work. And it's just seeing one on the bank after all that effort, knowing it's paid off, it, it, it is such a thrill. Well, I think it's fair to say that this session couldn't have got off to a much better start, really. We've just checked back through the, through the footage and the rod had actually been in the water for 17 minutes. Um, and it just goes to show, really, the, the importance of, of location. I mean, here we are at a 70-acre lake. We were walking around for, for nearly four hours. And uh, in the end, we found the fish um, 12 feet from the bank in little more than a foot of water and the result was this absolutely awesome plump mirror and I am absolutely buzzing. There really is no room for complacency. If you see feeding fish, you have to take those chances when, when they arise. There was one. That was a fish. And if the fish are close to you, but not quite, not quite there, then you have to move. 15 yard out. If I was a carp, I'd be here. This is where I'd be. All that work and commotion going on today, all the vibrations, all this fresh earth getting, getting dumped in. Yeah, this is where I'd be. Because I'm nosy like that. I don't know what's been going on. This is where we're going. And I'll look ultra carpy, booted up on all this backfill. <laughs> You may not get another chance to, to locate them fish for, for hours or, or even days. So when you do see them, you, you take those chances when they are there.
Large water carp can often be very nomadic and fishing for them can be like a game of chess. Although having never played chess, I'm gonna liken it to Connect Four, where you always want to stay one step ahead. But quite often, you're actually one step behind. It's about half past six now. Been awake for about an hour and a half, just that it was getting light this morning. Um, and nothing's happened since the last time you saw me. But shortly after first light, the fish did put on a little bit of a show to the right of the swim. Not too far from where my, my right hand rod is, but also, another one, but also not quite close enough for my liking. They're probably 10, 15 yards away from where I'm fishing. Um, every now and then one does show a little bit closer, but I don't feel like I'm quite, quite there. So I'm in a bit of a quandary. I don't know whether to risk just a, a short move just round the corner here and make a few underarm casts where they are. Um, but it is quite weedy, so it may take me a few attempts to find a, a clear area to present a bait. And obviously in, in doing so, then I, I risk spooking the fish and ruining any chances I might have. Um, so I don't know, I'm in a little bit of a dilemma. I don't really know whether to just stop being so impatient and wait to see if the fish do move a bit closer or whether a move is on the cards. I think I'll uh, put the kettle on, have a brew, and hopefully things will become a little bit more clearer. I actually think T is probably the biggest edge I've got right now. And you sat clutching a brew, surveying this huge body of water in front of me. There's probably more carpy than fishing itself. So really, in doing so, I'm winning. A winner in my eyes. <laughs> you can never sit like they never do it. What do you mean? It's just that is if ever you just start scanning the water, there's only one pose you can do. That isn't the pose. You can never do that pose. That's also a little bit cheeky. You can't do that. <laughs> that isn't a good one. No. No. That's worse. <laughs> it has to be that. That's it, yeah. You look like you mean business when you sat like that. There are times when you won't be able to find carp and in those situations it does come down to watercraft, a little bit of gust instinct and also the weather conditions that will determine where you actually end up plotting up. And I do have quite a few weather apps on my phone that I do keep a close eye on. A new fresh wind is a good a bet as any in these situations as to where the carp will actually actually be located and being in an area
that is about to receive a new wind is a huge advantage. It's one way of staying that one step ahead of the car. Well, I'm sat here now at the end of the lake where we actually caught that fish from, which seems like a long time ago now. And it looks pretty devoid of life, to be honest, and it has done all day. But conditions are, are completely changing um, in the next sort of 12 hours. The wind's meant to change and, and push up here. Uh, we're getting a drop of, of air pressure, and that's bringing with it uh, uh, wet weather as well, lower temperatures. Um, all of which are a bit more conducive for, for a, bit of a, a bit of feeding fish, really. And although this looks really bad at the moment, if I was fishing without the pressure of the cameras, knowing I didn't have to catch anything, then this is where I, I would be. Um, having seen that the change uh, in, in the conditions, I would like to be here have all my traps set before the carp arrive. That way they can move into the swim and there's no disturbance. Um, I won't be putting them on edge and then they should hopefully come in and, and feed with confidence. Um, it is a gamble. There's no doubt about it, it is a gamble. Sometimes gambles pay off. Um, so yeah, I think it's worth it. If I am going to be fishing a venue regularly, then I do like to make notes of any features that I find. Um, and any time spent with a, a marker rod can prove invaluable. Um, whether it's during the actually, uh, your actual fishing time, or if you have a spare few hours, pop down the lake uh, with a marker rod, map out the swim, uh, and store all that information for future reference all of which can prove absolutely invaluable. Um, if I'm not able to locate carp, and I am having to rely purely on my gut instinct, having an understanding of the swim that I've moved into and knowing where those features are and however many wraps they are to certain marks will mean I can be fishing very quickly with no disturbance to the swim and there'll be no risk of spooking any fish that may be in the area. Also, I'll mark down any areas where I've seen carp showing regularly. And it may seem pointless and, and, and futile at the time, but maybe one, two, or however many sessions down the line, that one little snippet of information that you've stored may actually be that one final piece needed to complete the puzzle. Almost a straight southerly now. In fact, I'd say it is a straight southerly now. Actually, if anything, it's got a little bit of westerly in it as well. <laughs> I just imagined this to like, um, you know, like when you go to a trout farm and you put like pellets in, you just see like ball waves just <laughs> moving down the lake. That's what I imagined it'd be like, like a, I don't know, like a, like a school of 
migrating dolphins. <laughs> 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 All moving down the lake. <laughs> I reckon this this session will will it's testing my faith in the carp gods to be honest. Yeah. I feel like I've done everything right. I mean this this if this goes unrewarded, then I'm gonna have to question my faith. I really am. I'm, I'm, I will begin to think they don't even exist. It can be hard going, and there are undoubtedly going to be blanks, which can feel cruel and demoralizing. These are harsh environments, and sometimes it can be a battle against the elements just as much as it is against the car. But when it all comes right, all of that frustration is forgotten in a second. And when you do manage to unlock the code and put one of those carp on the bank, it there, for me, is no greater feeling. Well, the wind has really picked up now. It's absolutely smashing into this corner where I'm fishing. It looks absolutely prime. If I could make carp fishing conditions, this would be it. But as good as it looks, nothing's happened. And as much as I would dearly love to stay, I've got to pack up and go home. Um, considering this has been my first session, here at Girton, I'm going away happy. We had that fish very early on in the session, 17 minutes after casting out, and the next three days uh, have been kind of uneventful really. But it really does just go to, to highlight what I was talking about earlier, about taking those chances when they are there. If I'd have been a little bit slower in getting that rod set up and in place, or, or hadn't seen them fish, then who knows, I could be going home with a blank, but I'm not. I've caught a fish, but probably more importantly, I've learned absolutely loads. And as much as it would have been nice to catch maybe one more, I'm still going home with a, with a wealth of knowledge for my next session here, and I absolutely can't wait to get back.